Okay, I thought I was going to finish up with uh, the last video, but I neglected to show a few things, and I'm going to do that with video uh, probably number seven here. I've got the plastic ball sitting on top of the um, motherboard that has the master controller circuit board that we've been talking about that I, I designed and built. And there's four wires coming out. Uh, there's a ground wire, there's the internal oscillator wire, and then there's the two trigger wires, one for the master channel on the, uh, that would connect to the master channel, channel one on the uh, spooky, and the gating channel. Uh, and they're, they're color-coded appropriately or identified appropriately. The one with the capacitor is the internal oscillator. I didn't show you switching back and forth. Now, normally this is all done with the switches right here, uh, but I'm not, I don't have this all packaged. Uh, I couldn't package it up to show you all the details, so it's unpackaged right now. And I have the power on, and I'm going to turn this. Okay, the power is being provided, but there's no input. So if I connect this wire coming from the spooky, um, the ground wire, the black wire also goes to the spooky. I've got a pigtail down. If I connect this to the master channel, look at that. The plasma ball starts right up. If I disconnect it, that would be controlled now through one of the switches. But I'm doing it manually with jumper wires. If I connect, if I connect the, uh, uh, let me redo this. Let's put the alligator clip on there and disconnect it from the spooky and go to the internal oscillator end of the cap. Watch what happens again. Look at that. Now it's running on the internal oscillator. So you can see how these four wires can, can be controlled through switches and plugs coming off the master controller. Four wires. And just follow the schematic. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show while I was here, and I, I showed it in one of my earlier videos when I was doing gating only, and I, I keep getting asked for alternatives to um, buying a tri-field. I bought this little um, pocket oscilloscope. I'll turn it on. Hopefully I'll turn it on. Come on, pop on. There we go. It's, it's loading up. It's a uh, pocket oscilloscope. And if I bring the probe near it, look at that. Here's the probe. And you can see I'm, I'm well, about a foot away now. And you can see how it acts as an, uh, an intensity. Now, I've, I can change the sensitivity and measure that uh, field at a much larger distance. This costs $79, I believe. This meter costs $129. This is a lot more versatile uh, because you can do a lot of other things. It is a full-blown mini oscilloscope, and it gives you a way of seeing the electric field. Compared to, turn this on, and as you can see, I want to turn it on. The uh, turn it turn it on meter pegged, but of course, if I intercept that electric field. Now the electric field is being intercepted by my hand and my body is sucking that electric field up. Find the right level here. There we go. And it blocks it from the meter. $129, $79, more versatile. And that's my story, and I've showed you how we can switch from Spokey to the internal oscillator. I'll do it one more time. That, that, that alligator clip is going to the drive. I just disconnected. The plasma ball went off, and I'll bring it back to the Spokey. And there it is again. And, of course, the Spokey, under software control, you can change the frequencies and so forth, according to the rules that I've defined. Um, okay, uh, read the PDFs that go up regarding this also because the, they get modified and we learn something new every day and uh, the modifications are generally um, better rules to follow and so forth. Okay, thank you very much. The end of this video. This will close up the series on uh, how to modify a plasma ball.
feel free to uh, converse with me via email or via the blog on the website, uh, the YouTube website. Have a nice day, everybody.